Surprise! <laughs> it's the bracketology. The bracketology part one. Well, English part one. English part one. Y'all thought y'all were done. Y'all thought y'all were going to hear from us for a week or two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But no. We're serious about this, the bracketology. Y'all voted. And right now we have got... What do we got, Patrick? We got Dunhill. My mixture. Nine, six, five. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, so, ain't, we ain't even going to get into what we're smoking in. We're just going to talk about the smoke. Mm -hmm. The smoke itself. Doesn't even matter because we're going head to head. You voted, and we're going to try to decide. Mm -hmm. And you guys voted on some, some deep cellared stuff that I had to go fishing for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, um, you had to fish for it in your cellar. We had to go buy some of it because mm -hmm. we didn't have it. Yeah, um, I, I ran out of Artisan's Blend. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, we're doing it a little different than what we said we was going to do. You're going to get this episode today or sometime. And you're going to get subsequent little updates throughout the week. And then uh, Friday, guess what? You're going to get a conclusion to the English. To the English. And then we're going to roll right into the Vapor. The Vapor. Virginia Perique mm -hmm. next week. Mm -hmm. Get excited. You see, for all you beginner pipe smokers, y'all get to ride along with me as most of these blends I haven't had before. Like right now, I haven't had Dunhill. I haven't had any Dunhill. This is the first Dunhill I've ever had. This is my Mission 965. So, y'all get ready to roll. So, Dunhill has um, always done... I mean, all the blends that I've smoked of theirs, uh, My Morning Mixture, 965, um, Navy uh, Deluxe Rolls, um, Nightcap, Nightcap, Elizabethan Mixture. Um, they're all just, you can't really do anything with Dunhill except that it is a great standard. You know, I mean, I mean, I guess that's probably why they have standard mixture, which mm -hmm. I don't like too much, but like, it's there is you can always kind of put a I think this is the reason people are really upset about losing Dunhill is because you can always put a a good standard against the Dunhill brand. Yeah. As far as tobacco is concerned. I mean you can really just set up, you know, what you consider the standard heavy Latakia, heavy Oriental, like what is your preferred Virginia Perique and stacking those up against uh, other blends I think has helped a lot of people over the years come up with you know really their standard and taste their standard just across the board so it's always good to kind of like do this kind of compare and contrast with the Dunhill blends um, I think it sucks that they're going away yeah and you know it sort of feeding off of what we talked about last episode it's almost like Dunhill you know would have been if they were if they were to continue would have been the standard that, you know, like we were talking about, you know, like, it's sort of like the break even. You know, I guess there are some exceptions. You know, a lot of people um, like Nightcap and Elizabethan and My Morning Mixture, but that could be more than just the standard, but it seems like they, it could have been that. But now we're in search for the new. <laughs> and that's, I guess that's the whole part of it is you're always on the quest for a new tobacco. So, yep. um, always chasing something, you know, I've seen people who, I kind of envy people who just have the one blend, you know, the one they found, you know, uh, I guess, Shrang, uh, what is it, Shangri-La, uh, they found, oh. uh, <laughs> Xanadu, they found their paradise, their Eden, with one mixture, um. Unfortunately, I'm not that guy. I've tried and tried and tried. I've got some standards, some things that I like a lot. Um, but I can, I always find that they sort of get toppled by another eventually. You know, I usually keep a blend for about two to three years that I really like. And then eventually it gets kind of overran by something yeah. else. So that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping to find one or two of, of uh, different types of blend. But like, you know, I've tried it. I've tried it all, or most all, and this is what I've decided upon. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people's tastes change. Sometimes it's not the blend itself. Sometimes it's the person. And then, heck, it could be the blend. Sometimes the, the blender may 
It may swap over uh, the the company may swap. Yeah. And that can always you know there's a lot of variables when it comes to the to somebody's favorite blends. But so far with the nine six five, you know it's it's I think it's a pretty good blend. Um, it's it's got a little bit in the in the retro hell that makes me think back to like my college days when I smoke cigarettes every now and again and I'd retro hell a cigarette. Uh, it, it sort of I don't know if that's a burly, but then I mean, there's not burly in this. Um, I think it what's in this is um, Cavendish, um, Turkish, uh, some Orientals and um, well Latakia and Orientals and um, I think uh, Virginia. Uh, I think it's bright Virginia. Yeah, so they have um, yeah everything you did. Uh, Oriental Turkish Virginia Cavendish and Latakia. Um, I find that Cavendish really mellows out a blend, but um, the difference between say we're gonna do some Dunhill comparisons here. The difference between nine six five and say early morning. Um, early morning is going to be a much lighter all day kind of smoke. Um, I can definitely taste the Latakia. It's a lot more pronounced in this one. Uh, I think the Cavendish kind of sweetens it and then with the Virginia and then the whole thing is sort of has a spicy kick from the Oriental yeah. and it sort of rounds itself out. But there's a lot more of that kind of campfirey wood burning smell from the Latakia. And this is Cyprian Latakia. Um, I like this blend um what it is to me is if you could take um westminster by glps and actually add more latakia to it now not a lot so we're not talking about just so uh maybe like a i think a 10 to 15 percent increase on your latakia and you're probably going to come out with the way westminster tastes i don't think westminster actually has cavendish in it I could be mistaken but i don't think it does um but that's what it tastes like to me it tastes like a more pronounced uh westminster um there there are some mixtures that um, um for instance the sassini balkan uh blend um which has the namesake of my favorite uh pipe maker which, as a side note, uh, I'm glad you guys didn't listen to the podcast and go bidding on eBay because I just won two of the Sassini pipes that I wanted. Which, <laughs> also, uh, I'm happy to announce that my wife will be divorcing me when she finds out about it. <laughs> but no, so, yeah, so Westminster, I just looked it up. It actually doesn't have Cavendish, but all the other blends are the same. So it is minus the Cavendish has the same component says my mixture 965 it's just that my mixture may have more right let it be, you know? a good comparison might be to buy my mixture uh bb 1938 which is uh, te technically a a recreation of the baby's bottom blend which mm -hmm. i don't think was a dunhill blend to try it out and see how it stacks up to my mixture 965 um i might do that I might do like a, a quick side by side on this because once this jar is out, which there's not a lot left in it, once this jar is gone, there's not going to be any more nine six five for us. Yeah, and yeah, we're done with it. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh. Um, no, I have some stashed far, far away. Some of that. Yeah. Oh. But nothing I'm going to be getting out for the next couple of years. And I did read somewhere where the Cavendish in this is called Brown Cavendish. I've never heard of brown. I've only heard of just plain and black Cavendish. So, what's that mean? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, brown Cavendish is the European style of making Cavendish. So, black is like steamed burley, typically. And it's usually got like a nice syrupy sugar coating on it. But if I'm not mistaken, or it might just be that it's coated. If I'm not mistaken, brown Cavendish is the European way of doing it. It's typically done with Virginia one. It is 
steamed until it turns a darker color and i don't think that there's actually a topping added to it mm. so it's a more subdued version than what the american cavendish that most people are familiar with um which has a much more topped like really kind of flavor filled artificial flavor and when i say artificial i'm not saying that the component that they've added onto it is necessarily like non-organic or something it's just not the way tobacco tastes <laughs> um element to it i don't really taste anything extra in this blend i never really have as far as i'm concerned the latakia stands out in the forefront the cavendish is unsweetened and everything sort of has that natural taste to it doesn't mean it's not topped with something most of them are um this is a scandinavian tobacco group blend so you know i mean i'm used to scandinavian or german blends having some sort of adder you know, some sort of extra topping on it that kind of stands out, but I'm not really tasting it with this. Yeah, I you got a little bit of a nuttiness with this one, mm -hmm. uh, and I like it. Yeah, I, it's sort of this is sort of my first experience with um, being upset that a blend's going away. Oh, it's, really? It's the first time I've smoked a blend that's going away that. I probably would have con would have continued to buy. I guess that's why people are upset with like. Now, I've heard through various rumors and things that potentially the Dunhill brands are going to clean out with the actual Dunhill name, yeah. and then another wave of tobacco is going to come in called White Dot or something similar. Like all the all the actual dunhill pipes that actually have dunhill stamped on them they're they're going away but they're still going to be technically the same they're just not allowed to carry the dunhill name anymore they're just going to be called the white dot which if you own a dunhill pipe or you have you know uh, you'll know notice that on the box it does call call out the white dot which is sort of the marker of yeah, all Dunhill pipes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just a little white, yeah, white dot that's put into the stem. And uh, that's going to be going forward the name of the brand, even though it's technically still Dunhill. It's I don't think it has the Dunhill name. And the from what I gather, it's the great, great granddaughter of Alfred Dunhill who wants to sort of separate herself from um, the tobacco community and wants to sort of house the dunhill name in high-end fashion basically yeah so will will the white dot be a like subsidiary considered now or is it going to somebody completely, completely new going to come in and buy it from dunhill i believe it's there's an italian fella who owns and will kind of work through all the construction of the pipes i still think they're made in england mm. but um yeah, it's whatever his company is, and it might be that like one of those companies, like whoever is in control of some of those Italian brands, he's just in control of it. And it might not, it might not be any more than distribution, and it might be a subsidiary. I don't actually have all the information on yeah. that. Yeah. And as long as like Scandinavian uh, tobacco group still blends it, I'm sure people won't see that much of a difference. Well, yeah, there's it, a it, bunch of recreations out there. I mean, if anything, if you have some of these you know, blends housed up. I mean, the best thing to do is to, you know, especially if you have plenty that you can do this, once they come out with a white dot or whatever, especially if it's a Scandinavian tobacco group, and get a hold of it, crack it open, and then do a comparison. I can't imagine that the Scandinavian tobacco group is losing the recipes. They're, they're probably not specific to Dunhill. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't assume. And, and that's part, maybe we, we can do an episode one day talking about the intricacies of the tobacco world about, about how there's you know there's blenders there's uh companies that own the recipes um and then things of things of that nature you know mm -hmm. glps he comes up with the recipes cornell and dill blends it for him mm -hmm. cornell and dill come up with their own recipes and then blend it the components are the same and then of course you know different different companies have their different they get their components from different places so Maybe hey, we'll get into that one day, but as far as this uh, 965 go, um, 
I really enjoyed this, this blend a lot. So in terms of other Englishes, where do you rank it? Like I'm trying to think of all we'll, the we'll pretend like on a one to ten scale. That way you don't have to go mm-hmm. through all the the. Uh... That's what I was thinking. Rating them. Yeah. I don't. I'm trying to think of all the Englishes I've had though. Um, I've had Squadron Leader once before. I don't really remember it much. Uh, Old Dublin, I believe. Peterson Old Dublin is a, an English. We'll do high low. That way you're not giving out a number. Oh. And then when you say the next number, like when we do Squadron Leader, you're not giving away who's going to be the outright winner. So, would this be high on your list? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I can see why this this is the one seed amongst the um, audience voting. It's um, I can see why it's a one seed. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's definitely. It's high. It's yeah, high. I mean, it's it's a it's a great blend. Um, I mean, you can see why that some of the actually I don't see why uh, deluxe navy rolls weren't bought up, other than the fact that. They mirror Escudo because they're super good too. I mean, I can yeah. see how someone might come up, come away with the idea that maybe branding. It's sort of like the you've got like um, honeycomb, and then you've got uh, cereal, and then you've got honey gold in that bag at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It might be a situation like that where maybe the Dunhill name carries a little bit more tout than say Escudo. Mm. But those navy rolls are so good. Like people just don't, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, which, I mean, I think... Oh, yeah, yeah. Scudo. It was the one seed and the other in the papers, wasn't it? Well, I'm talking about, like... Okay, sorry. I sort of kind of said something and then dropped off. And what I mean by that is not necessarily that it would be to bracketology, but when you look at the blends of Dunhill that have disappeared, Nightcap... Uh, my mixture, uh, early morning pipe. I mean, those are the three that really just sort of evaporated overnight. But you still have like I can still find standard. I can still find yield sign. I can still find uh, deluxe navy rolls. I can find standard mellow. Um, I can still find those. I can find uh, BB nineteen thirty six or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, which is a my mixture too. It's an MM. Now, what is MM? Was that just a certain my mixture? But like that was a certain just. You know how like GLP has like his Fog City and his Old World and all. Was that like something for Dunhill? Was they they had a bunch of my mixtures? I think there are a couple of different ones. I don't quote me on that, but I mean knowing that there is definitely my mixture nine six five and my mixture, you know, Baby Baby's Bottom. Yeah. Obviously, they kind of have they kind of geared up to having that, you know, in the title. So it probably is its own well, that's what I was wondering. series. I guess what, what denotes something to be a my mixture what i wonder unless it comes from i would assume alfred dunhill's personal mixing mm. you know or some sort of company thing i i, I really wouldn't know if that uh but is this high on yours um yeah i think uh I, it's actually really good um i think like i said a good comparison would be westminster of course i think of the english and like sort of a traditional term of Virginia, Oriental Turkish, and Latakia. Basically, whatever, if you want an English, I need those three components, period. Um, Which is kind of ironic because I think ultimately you could cut out Oriental because one of my favorite English quote-unquote blends would be Commonwealth, and it is just Virginia, Latakia. But... You know, I mean, I think if you're going to get real, if you probably were to, to really nail it down, I think having Oriental Virginia and Latakia in there standardizes it. Adding a little Cavendish kind of gives it a flourish, uh, especially brown Cavendish, because it's not going to be quite as a pronounced sweetness. Yeah. Um, gives it a little flourish, gives it a little bit something more interesting. So you have an extra... Um, what I always look for in an English blend is that... Um, it doesn't sour if you smoke it too hard. That's a good call to me if it, you know, if it's an English one because I find that some tobaccos, if you push them a little bit, they're gonna they're gonna sour a little bit. So that's one thing. This does that fairly well. I think that probably gives a little bit more credit to having the brown Cavendish in it. And then like another thing too, um, what I always look for as sort of a marker uh, of a fine. Latakia, Cyprian Latakia, um, and you can you can 
if you want to experiment with this, you can't get a hold of 965, then definitely get uh, McBaron's HH Latakia Flake. Is that there's a nice um, buttery finish. Mm -hmm. um, and it usually is, what I correlate it to, is the perfect um, combination of Virginia to Latakia. I feel like creates a nice buttery aftertaste where it's sort of sweet, cream, salty. And just a touch salty because I mean like I've, I've burned out tobaccos before and when they sour sometimes they can have kind of a saline aftertaste mm -hmm. that's not what I'm talking about that's that would be a poor quality tobacco it's when you smoke it and you have a light touch of salty butter at, as, as an aftertaste that's perfect this has that mm -hmm. I think um, I it's a little nice. sweeter because there's Cavendish just a teensy bit sweeter but I still I like that. I like that sort of flourish of butter note at the end. That's what that to me that is peak English blend is when you can have a buttery aftertaste. Um, hard to find. Most people overdo it with a Latakia. I'm looking at you like Ironside. I'm looking at you. Well, you'll find out like there's some other blends that we're actually going to try have a much uh, much more Latakia heavy. Uh, component to it um and then you're you know the other blend uh there's other blends out there that that they actually underdo the Latakia because as I said Latakia a little bit will do you as far as smelling it and kind of sussing it out in a blend you know if you underdo it um I like that as long as the Orientals are forward and not so much the Virginia um you know I think um, another blend that does it really well, another GLPs, is uh, um, Chelsea Morning. Yeah. You know, they sort of underplay the Latakia a little bit. They can be great, but they're completely different animals from what I consider as an English. So I think there needs to be a little bit more pronounced Latakia, and then that perfect combination of Virginia Oriental and Latakia will kind of make that buttery aftertaste. I could be talking too much, maybe about this but that's just my opinion on it no you go ahead uh what do you because like uh, one english i now remember that i i, I like pretty well is, is the cornell and dill star of the east but i do think this is a lot better um and i'm sure this has less latakia because star of the east is 50 percent latakia mm -hmm. um what, what's your feelings on that the Could, star of the east and commonwealth are going to be very similar mm -hmm. and what happens is when i feel when I smoke something like Commonwealth, I want a nice peated scotch with it. I, I just want all wood fire, all sea breeze kind of saltiness in my face. And that's what I get when I smoke Star of the East, Commonwealth, because they're so Latakia heavy. They pierce, they're almost like, it feels like you're smoking a scotch, a peated scotch. Well, it's actually funny you mentioned that somewhere, uh, I think it was that app that you tur that you turned me on to, the Pipe Notebook mm -hmm. app or whatever it is. It actually calls my mixture nine six five a Scottish blend, not an English blend. I never heard of a Scottish blend, and I you know I looked at some of the other ones that we're comparing it to, uh, and really the only difference is the brown Cavendish. I don't know if the brown Cavendish, because it adds some sweetness to it, makes it a Scottish blend. I don't know. Well, that makes sense because Rattray has a lot of. Uh... I think brown and black Cavendish in it, or some is it Scottish. Mm -hmm. They're a Scottish company. I think so. I could be wrong, actually. That so don't cool me on that. But like, like Highland Targe is like just a Klansman, not Klansman. That's not right. What what is it? Klansman's like the KKK, right? What's the, what are we talking about? What are the clans of Scotland? Oh, I don't know. Is that a Klansman? I'm Irish. I don't know. Yeah, you. Irish dog. I wouldn't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they are. I don't know. Well, either way, Highland Targe has like a Highlander. That's what it is mm. on on the Klansman. It's not well, a Klansman. I think there are connections from Scotland too. Maybe they yeah. are. But anyway, like <laughs> to which clan? No, well, the 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 Triple K clan. Mm. The, the burning of the crosses comes from the Scottish tradition. Really? Some kind of 
I think I read it somewhere where the um, the burning of a fire, or the burning of a cross was like something that the Scottish would use in like war. Huh. Like during war times or something. And then, of course, the clan used it a lot too. Listen, we just found out that a percentage of the listeners are from the UK. If you know, let us know. Mm-hmm. If you hear anything about that or you know anything about that, let us know. We know you're out there. But I love 965. I think it's a great blend. Um, it ranks high on English because it has, like I said, that kind of buttery aftertaste. I think uh, if you get a chance to get a hold of it, um, if you can find it on eBay and you can wrestle it away, I don't think you'd be going terribly wrong. Uh, my 965 has some age on it. Mm-hmm. It's about four years old almost, maybe three. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I've had it for a while. I don't always, I sometimes just let things sit. I do think that age actually mellows out the Latakia a little bit. Um, just because it's really age to me marries up well with a Virginia more so than it does a Latakia. That's why I always, whenever I see people sort of stockpiling their Latakia blends, I'm always like, well, I mean, it's going to mellow more. Uh, but, I mean, that, that's just my opinion. So don't quote me on that. Maybe maybe it's better mellowed. I mean, I've smoked. I mean, there was a, I can't, for the life of me, can't remember. But uh, there was a guy out on the West Coast, Northwest, like in Seattle. And he he had been in the tobacco trade for a long time. I think he passed away not too long ago. Um, but um, he had, I, I bought tobacco from him, not on the West Coast, but I mean, like I ordered it from him. And uh he had one called something Imperium and uh, all the tobaccos were like 40 years old. It took, it cost up an arm and a leg to get the tobacco, but it was really good. It was interesting because it was so aged. Like all his stuff was really good. It had this like sort of like this mellow, super mellow flavor and everything. But I remember getting that and loving it and um, kind of sad that he passed. And I guess, you know, really, I don't think you can get any of his tobaccos anymore. I think that's sort of, Died off with him. Mm. That would have been nice to try those. <laughs> mm-hmm. What? We know, yeah. The, um, so right now, you know, in, in my opinion, I mean, it's high. It's high. Up at I mean, this is going to be a hard one to knock off. I mean, people yeah. didn't just vote for it for any other reason than it's great. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm hoping, I mean, unless you got, that'd be really funny if, like, you guys just... <laughs> Just like trash the recordology and just voted on really terrible plans just to mess with us. Hey, you know what though? We're here to suffer for you, so we would smoke them anyway. Yeah, I mean it's not like we're dying over here from, from, from it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but anyway, I'm pretty much at the end of mine. Yeah, yeah. This is a quick one, a little half bowler. So come back uh, tomorrow to see the next blend. Oh yeah. See y'all then. <laughs>